Hi, this is Danny Lewis, course developer and tutor here at Point Blank Online. And this week, what I wanted to do is to emulate what's going on with Propeller Heads' figure app. So this is the app where you can trigger patterns and then you can also vary what's happening with the rotary controls. So I wanted to do something similar in Ableton Live. I've created a custom instrument rack and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how it works first of all, and then I'm gonna show you how I made it in the second part of the video. This is called the Robot Drums Rack and it's just a really nice, fun, inspired way to trigger some patterns and get some vibes down very, very easily. So let's take a look. So you can see my robot drums rack. I've got four rotary controls mapped. So one for the kick, one for the snare, one for the hat, and one for the tom. These rotary controls are influencing the drum programming. So they're creating variations. So we keep it running and we rotate these to create the variations on the fly. So it's a very kind of hands-on vibe. Instead of programming this stuff, we're literally gonna rotate to create the variations. Got a bit of a DJ Pierre style vibe on the go here. So I'm gonna manipulate these on the fly and we're gonna record the variations into the sequencer, into the arrange window. So I'm just gonna push the stop up here, reset everything from the beginning, push record, and then we're gonna do play, and I'll record the rotary control changes into the sequencer. So if you take a look at the arrange window, you can see the automation that's been recorded. The rotary control movement has been turned into a visual representation. So we can amend this. So I didn't give the best performance there. I can go back here and I can make changes to improve the grid sizes at the right time. And we've got these available for any of these elements. So there's the hat control, the snare control, and a kick if I used it. So this is a great way to do it. Like I said at the very, very intro, it's a little bit more of an inspired, spontaneous flavor. It's gonna break you out of your routine when you're actually making beats. So that's a little musical introduction. You've seen it in action. I'm gonna show you how I built the rack in the next section of the video. So I've got a brand new project here to demonstrate everything from scratch. On the MIDI track, come to instruments on the browser and set up an instrument rack. Now we're gonna load up a selection of simplers into this. So I'm gonna drag the first one in, open things up so we can see what's going on. And on this simpler, I wanna set the key so that it's only triggering from C3. So we're adjusting the low note and the high note. So this is only on C3 now. The other thing that I wanna do is bring on a MIDI effect. Now, if you've been using Ableton for a while, you may have sussed that it's the arpeggiator that I've been using for these patterns. So that's set up here. I'm gonna rename this as kick and duplicate to create my snare. This now, I'm gonna change the position of the MIDI note and I'm gonna duplicate again, rename. This is gonna be the next available note. Duplicate, rename, Tom, and move this on to the next. Of course, you can have as many as you want. It's up to you how many elements you have in your kit. So this is essentially what's becoming. It's like an automated drum kit. Similar concept, in fact, to a drum rack. So it's a bunch of simplers inside this instrument rack. So what we do next is we bring on the samples. I'm gonna click on height. The samples that I used in the demo before are here on my desktop. So I'm gonna drag this tom onto the sample area on the simpler with the hat, snare, and the kick drum, we're doing the same. Now the default settings that we've got for the speed of the arpeggiator are not optimal at the moment. I need to set these. And let's just assign the controls first. So with the kick, I'm gonna assign the rate to macro one. And I'm gonna also assign the snare to macro two, the hat to macro three, and then the tom to macro four. Let's rename these. So kick. 
Snap, Hat, and Tom. So the speed, so let's sort these out. Let's go to map mode. And for my kick, what I wanna do is I wanna have a minimum setting of every beat. So we come down to four. The maximum, I'm gonna take it something sensible, which is probably gonna be 12. So look, I'll show you, I'll trigger from the pad. So that's a nice little range of variations that are sensible. If I took it too fast, it might sound a little bit too glitchy. So the snare, now let's have a think about this. The snare at the moment, the minimum is 128, the maximum is one bar. So what I wanna do is set up the minimum probably to be something like probably every other beat, okay? The maximum, let's take this to 32. So let's have a listen. So for speed, we're back in my original project here. Just wanna point out the minimum and maximum rates for the Tom. And also on the Tom chain, I had a chord device before the arpeggiator to create additional variations. So I've got extra notes here. And I'm gonna do a little performance just to sum up here. This is relating it right back to that Propeller Heads figure app. So I can trigger stuff on the fly. Let's get the kick and the hat going. I can let go of the hat, bring it back on. Adjust the speed. This is the whole concept here. It's more of a performance vibe. If you're the kind of person that's not very good at playing stuff in time, don't worry, this is always gonna be in time. And it's a great way to get a performance aspect into your programming. Even if you're the kind of person that meticulously programs their beats, you might wanna try this because it really breaks things out of your regular compositional mold. Now, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, you might wanna check out the Ableton Live Sound Design course because in that course, we build a lot of racks instrument racks and also effects racks. It's a very broad ranging course that covers all kinds of audio processing and experimenting with things like the warping. You can find out more information about that course by visiting the Point Blank Online website. That's pointblankonline.net. And also don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for free tutorials. That's youtube.com slash pointblankonline.